With a look inside Maricopa Community Colleges, this is Maricopa Now. Here are some of the stories. One Maricopa graduate is in the driver's seat with the latest technology. Mesa Community College takes landscape design to the next level. Plus, students and faculty at Phoenix College are tackling food insecurity on campus. And there's so much more on this edition of Maricopa Now. Welcome to our show. Thanks for joining us at Gateway Community College where the geckos are celebrating 50 years of educating and engaging students and connecting with the community. I'm your host, Kim Getz. Imagine living in a world where you no longer have to drive to work, drive to school, or run errands. It is now becoming a reality. As Lisa Aquafreda shows us, Chandler Gilbert Community College is at the forefront of preparing students for advancements in technology. How we get to and from school and work is changing. The City of Chandler's trial grounds for driverless automobile transportation. And it's providing a high-tech career for Kelly Turpin, a psychology graduate of Chandler Gilbert Community College. I am obviously incredibly passionate about the idea of a driverless world and making that a, a safe road for us, our family, future children to travel on. Kelly took her love for psychology and advanced technology and is now behind the wheel working for Waymo, a self-driving technology development company with a mission to make it safe and easy for people and things to move around. But you won't find Kelly here in the driver's seat. Her job is rider support. And that means with the click of a button, the rider inside can ask any question about the vehicle from how it operates to even about the ride. Kelly says CGCC gave her valuable skills for her job. At Chandler Gilbert Community College, I took a lot of really great classes. My favorite was organizational psychology. I'm able to focus on managerial styles for my team, how to motivate them to provide the best kind of service. We see students come from all over the valley because of the service we're providing them. We have amazing internship programs where we connect the student in a class with what they want to do to that industry. With the variety of courses offered at CGCC, you can pursue a career in a high-tech field without following a direct science path, similar to Kelly's track. There's lots of options. Marketing, sales, there's so many other facets of technology and they're only as successful as their support teams and their support operations. You can build this great car, but it's just gonna sit in the building. No business is a business without operations, right? Kelly believes regardless of what avenue you pursue, a career in technology is the wave of the future and she says CGCC gives you the green light to drive the dream. From Maricopa Now, I'm Lisa Aquafreda. Urban planning, public parks, and residential spaces are just a few of the areas that utilize skilled landscape designers. For students interested in this career, Mesa Community College now offers a class in computer-aided design. Deanne Kincaid has the story. A walk in the park can be a breath of fresh air or simply a way to reconnect with nature. Landscape features enhance this experience and contribute to our quality of life. If you plan a career in landscaping, Mesa Community College is a place to go. Karen Logan Heaps teaches Introduction to Landscape Design where students learn to create freehand designs and drafting techniques. You don't have to have any drawing experience to come into my class. We will start from the very basics and we end with you feeling confident that you can communicate through graphics. This is the prerequisite class for Computer Aided Design or CAD class. Because they need to master the design process and the design creative thinking before they get to the mechanics of the CAD class. In the CAD class, all designs are done on the computer. The benefits of this are students can learn to work more efficiently, more quickly. They will have a computer backup of all their work. Condon said that students also learn presentation tools such as SketchUp, which is used to show customers a finished product of their landscape design. The Sonoran Desert provides a rich variety of trees and plants to create a sustainable landscape design. And there's also edible landscaping, where you can have the beauty of the flowers, then pick the petals and decorate your salad greens. Once students finish their degree at MCC, 
they should be able to find employment with established firms, government firms, or become entrepreneurs and start their own firm and build it up from there. The U.S. Bureau of Labor says the job outlook for landscape architects will grow 6% over the next five years. Salaries range from $25,000 to $65,000 per year, depending on education and experience. If students want to do any work with the government, all government work must be submitted on computer-aided design. Betsy Dowling completed the manual drafting class and says that taking the landscape AutoCAD class helps her acquire the dual skills necessary to compete in this industry. This course is going to really elevate my skills so that I can articulate my designs, not just to the client, but to every person who's involved in the installation, from the irrigation people to the lighting people, um, and of course to the people who deal with the plants and the hardscape. Mesa Community College offers the only landscape horticulture program in the district. For more information, go to mesacc.edu. I'm Deanne Kincaid for Maricopa Now. Coming up on Maricopa Now, see how students are lending a helping hand to Mother Nature. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self. And I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Hey, let's check out this park. <laughs> oh, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> to find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Fighting hunger is a common problem on college campuses across the country, but at Phoenix College, students, faculty, and staff are working hard to make sure none of their students go to class hungry. Brandon Newman brings us the story. 64% of our students have reported not having enough money for all three meals a day. Recognizing the problem, the students, faculty, and staff at Phoenix College stepped up to help distribute food to those in need. What began three years ago as a small student club has now grown into a full-service food pantry. We kind of organize more now as like an academic slash service committee. We really care about our students and you know this has really been a grassroots effort um, to show that we hear and see our students needs and we want to do something about it. For students like Shantasia and Leonidas, the food pantry is a key part of their academic success. Oh, you can't focus, your grades start going down, declining. That will happen to me in my first few semesters. Coming up here just to get some food in order to get to my classes, it really does help me a lot because I sometimes can't even focus when I'm hungry. I could be the best teacher in the world. If you're hungry, you're not going to be learning. Partnering with the St. Mary's Food Bank, the food pantry's success brings more nutritious types of food onto campus. The majority of the food comes from St. Mary's. Every other week we go and shop. We can shop for an hour and we get to load up two flatbeds full of stuff. So that also supplements our pantry. As the pantry continues to grow and serve more students, they look to the community for help. If anyone can donate toiletry items, food items, non-perishables, if they'd like to donate a little bit of money, they can do it at phoenixcollege.edu slash pcgives, and that will be under the PC Pantry designation. The volunteers and staff at Phoenix College take great pride in serving the needs of their students and working together to solve the problem of hunger on campus. The PC Pantry really came out of the heart of the bear and the heart of the faculty and staff here. I hope we no longer have a food pantry in the near future because that would mean that hardly anybody is experiencing food insecurity. 
Brandon Newman reporting from Phoenix College for Maricopa Now. My name is Jim Heider. I'm a adjunct instructor at Rio Salado College in the STEM department teaching nanotechnology. Nanotechnology covers the full gambit of STEM. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics are all disciplines that you'll find within the world of nanotechnology. Students at Rio Salado have an opportunity to see some of the most cutting edge science that's even available. We offer an introduction to nanotechnology class. Within the, the 12 weeks that you would be in that class, you will have a broad overview of the entire nanotechnology industry. When you see a student that's learning or seeing this stuff for the first time, to see them move from, you know, this is all new and exciting, to, wow, I actually see myself working in this field, that's extremely rewarding. At Rio Salado, nanotechnology knows no limits. Scottsdale Community College celebrated the grand opening of its Indigenous Cultural Center and Business School. We have the only dedicated learning center for accounting and statistics in the entire Maricopa District. The new building includes state-of-the-art technology, collaborative study space, and a storytelling circle. Scottsdale Community College is located on Native American land and has a partnership with the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian Community. The governing board approved Estrella Mountain Community College $31 million to expand the campus. During the past decade, enrollment growth has increased by 38%, and with more than 15,000 students, space is limited. The campus expansion includes a new classroom office building, biology lab, parking lot, and renovation of enrollment services, and Gateway Community College's Southwest Skill Center, which is located on campus. A new self-service kiosk at Glendale Community College helps students find the information they need to succeed. The kiosk highlights three important services, Gaucho 101 Student Success, Disability Resources, and Veteran Services. Users can also enter their email address to request more information. The kiosk is located in the Enrollment Center, but can be moved during events to high traffic areas. Glendale Community College's law enforcement, fire science, paramedic, and EMT students participated in an active shooter mass casualty drill. Each semester, this training exercise, held at the Glendale Regional Public Safety Training Center, prepares students for their roles as first responders. Paradise Valley Community College offers a free ceramics program for veterans and their families. The program is sponsored by the Maricopa Community Colleges, Arizona Artists Guild, March on Ceramics, and a grant from the City of Phoenix Department of Arts and Culture. Classes are held the first and third Saturday of each month from 1 to 4 p.m. at the D Building Ceramics Studio. To register, contact ceramics instructor David Bradley. A decade of war has taken an unprecedented toll on our men and women in uniform. Hundreds of thousands of our veterans are suffering from the trauma of war. At Justice for Vets, we believe that every veteran should have the opportunity for treatment and restoration. Get involved and go to justiceforvets.org. Help put treatment within reach of veterans in crisis. Veterans fought for our freedom. Now it's our turn to fight for theirs. do anything for kids. Yet one in six children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. Hey guys, how are you today? Good. I'm here to talk about how with technology you can make amazing worlds. Come with me. My team and I bring the Halo world to life. Is that you? That is me. I wasn't a math genius, and I knew nothing about coding. But you guys do. You guys have the power to change things. I want your job. I want you to have my job. Hey foodies, Lisa here in the East Valley at Grace Farms. This place is truly a hidden gem that's beautiful. From the ambiance by La Key event design to the cuisine from the hidden kitchen, this place is one that you'll truly remember. Hi everyone, 
everyone. I'm here with Ivan Jacoba, former Shreya Mountain Community College yep. graduate who now has started The Hidden Kitchen. What's that all about? So The Hidden Kitchen is basically a restaurant concept with no address. Our location changes every time we do dinners. The way I like to explain it, we don't sell food. We sell an experience of bringing people together. We've already exchanged phone numbers and emails of the people that we just met tonight. So it was once in a lifetime, really. Everybody's pretty interesting. You know, everybody's unique in their own way. I met my girlfriend at one of these dinners that I'm currently dating right now. You're kind of like ramping up business a little bit here. Business has been booming, uh, no complaints there. So we're super excited to announce we're actually opening our first brick and mortar restaurant at Heritage Square in downtown Phoenix. Now, I'm sure when people hear this, they're like, wow, you went from the pop-up kitchen, then you went to a restaurant right out of college, like talk about success. Was it always this easy? Uh, not at all. <laughs> I remember it almost blew up a microwave at EMCC. Um, oh, no. So, you know, we've, we've came a long ways. He's become a leader. He's not only an excellent chef, but he's also an excellent business owner. You also want to give back and inspire future students who want to walk in your same footsteps. What do you plan to do? We're going to offer a six-month paid internship at the restaurant wow. um, to any of the students who graduate uh, from EMTC and fit the right criteria. Listen up. You're a student out there, Get right? Get good grades. <laughs> Get good grades. You want to work with him. So today we have a ricotta filled tortellinis with uh, roasted corn and a couple of different garnishes. So let's talk about the ingredients. Roasted corn is a corn puree. These are tortellinis filled with uh, ricotta cheese and a little bit of mayo. And then this little microgreen is uh, called uh, Fireheart. There's also some jalapenos and radishes in there. Oh, so it's got a little kick to it, right? Yeah. At the beginning, we're going to get some of this corn puree. And then we're just going to drag it around the plate and make it kind of artistic. You guys always make that look so easy. It's just like a swoosh. It never <laughs> happens that way, though. If you want to get one of these okay. tortellinis. And where do I need to put it? Uh, anywhere, I'm... wherever your little heart desires. My heart desires right there. Uno, dos, and, and tres. tres. And then we're going to garnish it with a little bit of the fire roasted corn. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Come on. <laughs> OK. I'll place a little jalapeno here. It's got a little kick. Yeah. Little Wake up, everybody, spice right? Spice in your life. <laughs> Ooh, that looks so nice. You eat with your eyes first, right? Yes, you do. <laughs> and then just sprinkle some of this heart on fire. Add another different element of spiciness. I don't know why we're not calling this heart on fire. <laughs> Especially because it goes with February. Right? The romantic ba scene. Valentine's. And then this is uh, the final dish. With great food and good company, that makes for an unforgettable experience. I'm Lisa, and see you next time on Chef's Menu. Cheers! Cheers! Jewelry can be traced back to the Neanderthals of Europe more than 100,000 years ago. Jewelry was used to showcase wealth, rank, religion, and affection to others. Artist John Zalepis continues this tradition of making jewelry. He has over 20 years experience in the art of jewelry and metalwork. He received his Master of Fine Arts in Metals from Arizona State University. He's an award-winning artist who's exhibited nationally. I'm very much inspired and have been by architecture and other art. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely a contemporary uh, style to the work. You know, just like clean lines, you know, simplicity and elegance. You know, growing up, I was very fortunate to uh, grow up overseas and I was raised around a lot of historical temples and museums in Athens, Greece. So I was always around art. John takes his love of art to his students in the classroom. They learn how to make metal jewelry. Everyone starts out with a flat piece of copper and a flat piece of sterling silver. They learn how to saw metal, how to cut it, drill through it, file it, and sand it. Once they learn how to do these four basic steps, they learn how to shape metal. So their first project that they do is they actually make a two-inch wide bracelet out of, uh, again, the material of their choice, usually copper brass. Tanya is taking his jewelry to class. But John just super, he's got a really um, simple way of explaining things to make them approachable. 
because um, if you walk in here and see somebody with a torch over there, it's going to look like scary. He really makes it so that you feel like you can, um, you know, you can learn these things. This is a Jewelry One project. It's a hollow form ring. In Jewelry Two, you get into more advanced, like this is fold forming of metal on curves. Um, this is my project I'm working on now. Sewell's plans are to build her own home studio and sell her jewelry. Julie Palisard is in the Jewelry One class. It's our first project, a cuff bracelet. Um, so what we did is first we went to our sketchbooks and we um, sketched out a design. And we learned how to cut the metal. We learned how to make these pieces in here um, that's piercing to cut the hole. We learned how to attach the metal. These are called rivets. And to attach the metal without you know, using um, heat, we learned how to finish and give color to the metal, which is called patina. Everybody has a place here. Um, the teacher is kind and patient. He works with beginners like me, and he also works with people that are quite skilled. Zalebis encourages the students to work on developing their own style. The main thing is it takes time. Like, you don't necessarily have to have a style when you start doing it. Once the students build a body of work, Zalepis helps them come up with prices. He has some success stories from students who've taken his class. Some of them have been doing it for over a decade now. Um, you know, they've gone and started their own companies. Whether you want to learn how to make jewelry for your own enjoyment or make a living at it, this class will give you the skills you need and is offered for all skill sets. John continues the tradition of making jewelry and exciting his students. The Maricopa Community Colleges offer classes for all kinds of skill sets that help grow the career of artists. If you are inspired by the process and beauty of making jewelry, perhaps you might consider taking classes. For more information, go to phoenixcollege.edu. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Spirit of the Arts. I'm Andrea Zakszewski. Hey, look, it's those guys. Are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. Many people are starting the new year with fitness goals in mind. The most accurate and advanced technology to measure body composition is available at Mesa Community College. Elizabeth Eckel takes us inside the Bod Pod. Here at MCC, students are being trained on the Bod Pod, the most accurate body fat testing machine to date. The Human Performance Lab at Mesa Community College is a state-of-the-art, hands-on learning facility for students in exercise science programs. So we have these tools down here, such as the Bod Pod, the VO2 Max machine, also known as a metabolic heart, the weights, as you can see, and all that is designed to educate them for their degree in personal training, um, health and wellness. I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to have you enter the Bod Pod now. So just remember, breathe normally, hands on your lap and we'll open the door in between each test. After the initial calibration and weigh-in, there's a series of three 40-second tests. The chamber fills up with air, the subject displaces that air, and then we're able to determine density based on that displacement. Once the test is complete, you'll receive a printed copy of the results. This right here shows us our body fat percentage. This shows us our lean weight, which would be our muscle, bone, tissue, organs, and that. And this is our body weight. The Human Performance Lab is open to the public. One BodPod test is $30 or $50 for two tests. 
anyone can call the Performance Lab to get tested in the Bod Pod. The Bod Pod actually doesn't just tell us body fat percentage, it tells us how much that, what is the makeup of that, such as is it muscle or is it fat? Everyone can benefit from the Bod Pod. Make your appointment today. For Maricopa Now, I'm Elizabeth Eckel. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. What are you gonna do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills. The smarts. Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you gonna make of yourself? What are you gonna make of me? popular habitat restoration area where visitors can see urban wildlife and native vegetation has given students the opportunity to help one of Mother Nature's most beautiful insects flourish. Scientifically proven, little dirt under the fingernails increases the serotonin levels in your brain. So you're going to feel good at the end of this morning. You'd never know these students are in the heart of the city, Phoenix, Arizona. Where you guys are standing is considered a riparian wetland area. When an accidental fire wiped out this section of land at the Rio Salado Habitat Restoration Area two years ago, it also took a prominent butterfly way station. We had lots of trees through here that created a lush corridor, if you will, and we had monarch butterflies that avidly migrated through here and used the canopy to shelter themselves from heat and from rain, wind, and cold. Today, EMCC biology students are continuing an ongoing effort to replace the gooding willows that were lost in the fire and get back that essential canopy for the butterflies to thrive. We're doing 14 on this side and the remainder on this side. Students strategically placed flags and planted 24 saplings that were cut from existing trees. The willows like to keep their toes wet, so we place them right along uh, these managed canals so they would have access to water in the heat of the summer. It's hard work, but students say it's a welcome break from the classroom. You spend so much time writing, typing essays. You're just out here, get your feet wet, put a little mud on you. It's, it's great. It's about providing engaging opportunities for students, but it's also about students being of service to their community. The reward for their work on this project, the arrival of more butterflies. They're landing on our new tree. Look at this. Yeah. I'm extremely grateful for our partnership with Australia Mountain Community College. We could not have done this restoration without them, and it's truly been a blessing to the area. Perfect. I tell these students, you know, you'll come back in 10 years and some of these trees that you planted will be way up over your heads and hopefully have monarch butterflies roosting in them, right? Bringing a balance back to nature in this urban environment for everyone to enjoy. It's a great feeling to know that we contributed to a little grain of sand to that today. Reporting for Maricopa Now, Pretty, huh? I'm Kim Getz. And that's our show. I hope you've enjoyed it. Be sure to stay tuned to MCTV for our great lineup of shows, including Inside Maricopa Sports and Enfoque and Two Futuro. Also, check out our website at mctv.maricopa.edu and click on DestTube. DestTube allows you to watch this show and all of our regularly produced programs anytime you wish. Until next time, take care. MCTV has more great programming coming right up. Join MCTV every day for Inside Maricopa Sports, Infoke and Tufaturo, and our daily community calendar update, Campus Calendar.